Father, give those children. Come on, can we praise the Lord? Let's have to end. God's been good to us. Amen. Last night we were in the service and the Lord began to speak to me a message. I'm going to be preaching at my church coming up very soon. But I begin to think about the word despised. Do you remember the scripture says he was despised and rejected? Yeah. I begin to think about the things that we despise or the things the enemy begins to make us want to despise. I come across a lot of people that are very upset with holiness. They're very bitter at holiness. Amen. And I'm not here to preach standards, but I'm going to tell you that there are a lot of people that are hurt and upset with holiness. And I was standing here last night and the scriptures came to me uh, or the story of the book of Ruth and the Ruth in the book of Ruth began to come to me as I began to think about that young lady that was in such a bad condition in a hurt state. She had devastated by loss. Everything in her life had crumbled. And even her sister-in-law walked away from her and her mother-in-law. She didn't have anything but her mother-in-law. And so she's fixing to go into a foreign land. She's going into a place that she doesn't understand. She's never been there before. Has anybody ever been somewhere you've never been before? You didn't understand where you were? And I know we're supposed to be just um, honoring Brother, Brother Andrew, and we are. We're doing that today. But I want to share this. It's on my heart, and that's all right. Because as we were begin, as, as I, was, I was thinking about that story, here's Ruth. She's poor. She's homeless. She has nothing. She has nothing but a, a not even a blood kin. She has a mother-in-law. And, and so she's looking around, and she's in a foreign country all by herself. When, when, when Naomi walks down the street, everybody's calling her name. Everybody knows who she is. But Ruth, she's just a Moabite. She's just a Gentile outcast, reject, and I, I know you don't know anybody like that, but she's just a rejected, outcast person, has no plan, nobody has anything for her, and all she can do is glean on the corners of a field. But as she's gleaning on the corners of a field, the owner of the field, Boaz, looks out and sees her gleaning and automatically falls in love with her. Here's what I love about the story. Nobody else even recognizes her, but the owner of the field recognizes her. No one else loves her, but the owner of the field loves her already. You see, Jesus talked about it when he said there was a man that went out into a field and found a treasure. And he went and he sold everything that he had to buy the treasure that was in that field. He bought the whole field just because the treasure was in that field. Now I know I was raised in holiness and they said that Jesus was that pearl of great price. And I, I sell out to buy Jesus. But I want you to know I never bought God. I never bought him. Amen. But I'll tell you what happened for God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, that's the treasure in the field. I am the pearl of great price. Hey God, I didn't buy Jesus, Jesus bought me. Is anybody here? And Ruth is that Ruth is just like me. I was out there in the field just trying to mind my business, just trying to get through life, just trying to make it through, and all of a sudden somebody buys the whole field just because I'm in the field. So I'm gonna tell somebody this afternoon, it doesn't matter how rejected you are, how dirty you are. I'm going to preach a message at my church on let's talk dirty. Let's talk dirty because she was a buried treasure that was dirty in the field. She came to Jesus dirty, but guess what? He bought the whole field just because I was in the field. So don't you tell me you're worthless. Don't you tell me that God doesn't have a plan for your life. Don't you tell me that you can't come out of where you are. He bought the whole field just because he saw you in the field. Is this all right? Amen. So we understand that this woman's just gleaning in the field. She doesn't have anybody. But now all of a sudden, something steps into her life unexpected, unwelcome, uninvited. Amen. That's what Jesus does. He didn't tap me on the shoulder and say, can I deal with you today? Can I convict you of your sins? Can I bring you to an altar of repentance? He didn't even do that. I was just sitting on a church pew. I was minding my business. I was at church with my daddy. And daddy was already at the altar. And I was standing back there waiting for the service to be over. I didn't say, Jesus, would you come in? He just slid up into the pew next to me and invited himself into the room. And I'm going to tell you, you might be here this morning or this afternoon, and you might be cold and indifferent. Amen. But God doesn't have to have your special invitation. But come back right where you are and change your entire life. And so uninvited, Boaz, I'm trying to hurry. But Boaz showed up in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of a field, and saw a little barefooted boy by 
about this woman. He said, who is that? Amen. Who is that? I am in love. Amen. Well, no, everybody, nobody really knew who she was. Amen. But one body said, well, I saw her showing up with my Naomi. She's a Moabitess. You know what that said automatically? That was, they were already trying to talk him out of it. They were already saying, no, you don't understand. She's a, she's a Moabitess. Let me put it in 2022. Amen. She's a meth addict. She's on drugs. She's an alcoholic. She's been married for a time.
me down. And so the Boaz says, oh, hold such a one. I got this woman Naomi. Are you with me? I got this woman Naomi. She's got a lot of land. He says, and if you redeem it, you can have that land. Well, he got excited. He said, I'll take the land. I want all of that. And then Boaz says, but there's a stipulation. If you take the land, you're going to take this little girl. And then she's a Moabite. What did he say? He said, I want the land, but I don't want that girl. She might mar my inheritance. What's it going to look like? What's it going to smell like? What's it going to feel like? What's it going to be like having somebody like her in my church? What's it going to be like having somebody like her?
completely on the other end of the spectrum. And we walked in and we got this, we got they wanted us to preach revival because they knew we was old fashioned, old time. Amen. So we walked in there and we just did what we do. We loved the people. We preached to them. We encouraged them. We shouted with them. We ran with them. But one of the old sisters in the church, she come up to me, it's with my wife, and she shook her hand. She says, I want to tell the reason why we don't live holiness anymore is because people were mean and harsh and ugly. And we figured we didn't want anything to do with that. She said, but you confused us. When y'all walked in the building, y'all confused us. Because y'all was holiness and y'all loved us. Y'all was holiness and you was kind. Let me tell you what hell did. Hell made you get offended at holiness. And then when you should have just realized
But I left it alone right. as much as I could. I left it alone. Everybody. And I want to tell her that she's not going to be able to hear me right now. Amen. In reality, you're not hurt at me. Right. You're actually hurt at God. Right. And though I as a pastor, I'm going to take it personally when you walk out of my church. And I'm going to take it as a blow against me because that's how I am. Amen. That's how he is too. Hallelujah. And that's how he is too. And that's how... Where's Brother Kenny? That's how he is too. Whether they want to admit it or not, we take it personally. But in reality, it's not a personal thing. Hell's causing them to despise something. Amen. That they don't even realize Jesus dwells inside of uh, and while you say I want all the blessings But I don't want the dirty job Of taking on Ruth Boaz says you can have the land You can have the possessions I'll take the girl I'll take her Because I know what's in her And I know what the end result of her is yes. Some of you are tensing up yes. Amen Come on. But it's still Come on. Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. It's still that. 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 You're my friend, but you might hurt me today. With that long hair running down your back and that dress down to your ankles. Uh, but I promise you one thing. I might have to go somewhere else. I might have to buy me a church I can worship in. Amen. I'm going to keep on serving God. In holiness. Because it ain't holiness that hurt me. And it ain't Ruth that's going to make me burn. I'm preaching everybody. Testifying to everybody. Huh? Come on. Am I making sense? Yes. Oh, yes. why are we despising? Yes. Right. Some of the most powerful weapons of our lives. Right. All because some idiot. Some moron. Some, like one preacher said, some nincapoop. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, we know some of them. Y'all don't know any. Y'all ain't got none of them up here. We got church I have. I had one woman stand on my porch one time. Come on. Amen. She, her daughter had moved in with us because she had beat her in the face with a rake. She wouldn't wear a shirt that wasn't a turtleneck. She wouldn't wear a dress that was above her ankle. She wouldn't wear a sleeve that was above her wrist bone. She sat down with my wife one day and she said, I just want you to know the reason I live the way I live is because I asked God to double sanctify me and he did it. And I said she's double stupid, double crazy, but she ain't double sanctified. Ain't no such thing. I said stupid in the pulpit twice. But I'm not in the pulpit though. I'm not in the pulpit. One day, one day I was up preaching in North Georgia and I just told a story about her like I'm telling it now and I didn't say her name but about three people in the congregation knew exactly who I was talking about. Yeah, and, 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 and so she showed up at my door when I pulled in from that revival up in North Georgia. Amen. And she said, I heard what you said. I said, I didn't call your name. She said, but they knew who I was talking about. And I just stopped her in the middle of her rant and I said, excuse me just a minute, sister, but what are you doing for God? She said, well, I fast, I pray, and I do devotion. I said, that's your devotion. But you're not doing anything for God. She said, well, you, I'm not a preacher, and I don't go door to door. I said, that shows how narrow your view is of ministry. I said, in reality, you're not doing anything for God. And she sat there with her turtleneck and her flip flops and her long. If y'all wear turtlenecks all the time, forgive me, but and her long and it's hot in South Georgia. We don't wear them because we're cold. But, amen. And she looked at me and she started in on me and she was on my porch, the one I built with my hands on my porch. Amen. I said, get off my porch. <laughs> Come on, son. I said, get off. Y'all, y'all might be gentle, but I ain't got time for all that ignorance. I said, get off of my porch. Come on, somebody. You know why? Amen. Because she could be doing some incredible things for God. She's got the personality to win people to Jesus. Amen. But she's stuck in something and she don't even realize what she's stuck in. I said all that to say this. Just because we got some turtlenecks, amen, that come run their mouth and hurt us and hurt our children and hurt our spouses doesn't mean I got to walk away from Ruth. Amen. I'm not going to despise the will of God because somebody's doing crazy. Brother Pete's a few
Christ. Because they didn't understand. They didn't know who he was. So just, they despised him. Huh? And I'm telling you, it's not just in Kentucky. It's all over the world. Hey now, the taste of holiness is becoming a bitter word in our churches. All because a bunch of idiots come on, tried to do it in their flesh. And when they let God do a sanctifying work in people, catching them on, is this all right? Catching them on the altar and say, all right, baby, I know you prayed. You need to go get a haircut right now. If you'll get a haircut, God will save you. No, I don't get good to get God. I get God to get good. And I don't know how y'all teach it up here, but I believe the Holy Ghost will get God will get the Holy Ghost to anybody that'll repent. Woo! And that's chapter number two. He said, how do I get this? I repent. Well, you know the story. Amen. We didn't wait a grace period for them to get good and sanctified. We didn't wait three or four years until they got to some level of holiness. Amen. He said, right now, if you'll repent, God will give you the Holy Ghost right now. It's all right. In Acts chapter number eight, Philip went down to Samaria. Amen. When he got down to Samaria, he's preaching to the outcast, the ghetto, the trap house. Come on. Amen. He was preaching to the drug dealers and the drug and he was preaching to Samaria and all of a sudden they started repenting of their sins. They got baptized in the name of the Lord and, that, and then they come down from Jerusalem and they waited a few weeks until they got good and sanctified. They waited a couple of months until they stopped wearing their shorts. They waited a little while until they got... No! They laid their hands on them and they received the Holy Ghost. Receive it. I just got the Holy Ghost. That's it. That's it. We made it hard, didn't we? I'm not on another message. I don't know where I'm at. I don't look like I know where I'm at, but I do know where I'm at. I look like I'm done, but I'm really not done. Acts chapter number 10, there were some folks sitting around their house doing the best they knew how. Cornelius' house. They didn't know what else to do. They were doing all they knew how. Are you hearing me? Let me put it in 2020. They were sitting in an old dead church. They didn't have no move of God. They had a popsicle in the pulpit and icicles in the pew. But they were doing the best they knew how. I didn't call nobody name. I, if that offended you, you must have a popsicle in the pulpit and some icicles in the pew. Yeah, all of us. Yeah. Church of the Chosen Cross. Amen. They're sitting in their house. They're doing the best they can. Is this all right? For me, y'all didn't ask me to preach, but I'm telling you, I feel this in the Holy Ghost. Is this all right? Amen. And so you understand. Cornelius is sitting there praying. He's doing the best he can. He's not supposed to have the Holy Ghost. He's a Gentile. It ain't even for him. He said, but God, I'm going to get just as close to you as I possibly can. And an angel shows up and says, Cornelius, the Lord, you have built a memorial before, before God and God can't see around it. Amen. And God's about to pour his spirit out. But you got to go get a man from Joppa named Simon to preach to you. We know what's happening. Simon's on the housetop. The, the sheep let down in the four corners. God's talking to Peter about his prejudice. I said, God's talking to Peter about his prejudice. I said, God's talking to Peter about his prejudice. Come on, Sunday morning is still the most segregated day of the week. And so Peter goes down to Cornelius' house and a group of people, amen, that were not good enough and did not have everything in order. The people that were despised and rejected by the apostle. Peter stands up and starts preaching to them. And while Peter's preaching, the Holy Ghost rested on all of them and they received the Holy Ghost and spoke with other tongues. In Acts chapter 19, there were some men there. Yeah. They were they were disciples, probably of Apollos. Oh, they were, all the thing they knew was the baptism of John. Oh, yeah. That's all they knew. Yeah. Repentance. Yeah. Paul, uh, Paul came to them and says, "Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed?" Yeah. They said, "We didn't know anybody was getting the Holy Ghost. We thought we had it all. We thought we had everything you could yeah. get. Y'all yeah. don't know nobody like that, do you? We didn't think there was any more than what we had." We're the, we got, we're the only ones that's got it. Wow. <laughs> but Paul says, listen, how are you baptized? Yeah. 
We were baptized under John's baptism. John's baptism. Uh huh. Paul said he took him to the side and instructed him in a better way, baptized him in the name of the Lord Jesus. And then the Bible says he laid his hands on a group of people that were ignorant and didn't know any better. See, they were so ignorant, Brother Coots, they didn't know they had to wait a little while and get good sanctified for they get a hold of it. They didn't even know they had to fast and pray and see God laying on the floor and crying, crying, begging, begging, begging to get the Holy Ghost. They didn't even know that. They were so ignorant. God just laid his hands on them. And they received the Holy Ghost. And they spoke in tongues just like everybody else did. And they went from there. You know what happened? They were teachable after that. And Paul taught them in the school of Tyrenus for two years. And in the space of two years, all of Asia. Now you need to understand, I'm a fourth grade teacher. I teach science. We don't teach geology, geography in, in fourth grade. We teach, teach about the American Revolution. But, amen. I, I do know this about Asia. Asia is not a country. Asia is a continent. All of Asia heard the gospel in two years. Because 12 people plus Paul received the Holy Ghost. And they weren't supposed to have the Holy Ghost. Why are we despising things that we should never be despising? Why are we overlooking things we shouldn't be overlooking? I felt the Holy Ghost last night. And I wanted to tell you, I, I wish I would have went last. I wish these others would have preached. But I feel this in my spirit. God, the enemy is causing some people in this room to, to despise something. We should not be despising. You're looking at Ruth. Saying, what's that going to do to me? She's dirty. Nobody wants her. Nobody loves her. Nobody cares for her. Hello? And you know, we would think that that is represents a sinner, and it does. But it also represents some things we're despising for no reason except for that we were connived by hell to despise something we should never be despising. We're despising something that God has intended for us to despise. Come on, brother. I've been there. I've been there. I still get that way sometimes. I mean, dear God, we're staying in Corbin, Kentucky. We're right now from Holiness Headquarters, London. You can't go to Walmart without seeing a skirt. You can't go to Walmart without seeing long hair. And that's not what it's all about. But that's a big sign of some things we were raised around to believe what holy the standards were. But what's that feeling? It rises up in us. And it's not a good feeling when we see that. Is this all right? We're really not supposed to feel that way. And Brother Andrew, I'm like you. I've been guilty of just blasting it in the pulpit so much that I created a culture in my church. Unknowingly, I create a culture in my church to despise something. When in reality, I want my people to walk in holiness. I tell my people holiness with love is like an atomic bomb. It's going to rock our community. They're going to see us and they're going to expect us to throw our nose in the air. And they're going to expect us to treat them ugly. And they're going to expect us to walk by and not talk. But then all of a sudden they see this fat ball boy walking down here. Amen. They said there's something different about him. Some people think I'm a coach. Some other people think I'm a preacher. Amen. But I walk down there and I put a big smile on my face. I learned how to do that in elementary school. Amen. I put a big smile on my face. A lot of times it's fake, but they don't know. And I'm smiling even though I'm hurting. And I'm smiling and loving. Even though somebody just did me wrong. And I'm smiling and I'm hurting. Amen. And I look at them and I say, how are you doing? How is your day? I'm good. What's your name? Amen. And here I am. And they probably had a grandma or a grandpa or a uncle or an aunt. Amen. That lived like I lived. And was so hateful and mean. Come on. Hallelujah. Hey, Y'all know what I'm talking about. And they're looking at me so puzzled. And they're so confused. Because they see my wife. But she's got a smile and a glow. And a love. And we're, come on. When I go door knocking, I don't go to the big rich neighborhood. I'm down in the ghetto. I knocked on the door the other day. They said, preacher, you're crazy. I said, what are you talking about? They said, you're knocking on the trap house door. That's 
some one type of person, they're hurt, they're back in the corner, they don't know where they can do and go and who they can be around, so they sit at, house, at, the, at the house until they backslide. There's another backslider in the room that you use some kind of situation to blame it on church hurt so that you can really backslide like you want me to. Both of you in the house right now. This is what I tell our people that walk in, those holiness backsliders that walk in our church, that think we're like everybody else. I look at them real bold, and I'll say, I don't know who hurts you, but I ain't that man. around this 
Let's lift our hands and the 